Hello and welcome again to Mike Martin Asks. Again this week, I have an amazing guest for you. Now, this person, right, I tried to get him on the first week of this year, right? So he was the first person I wanted to, wanted to interview in 2023, right? But he's, and you never hear him talk about money, right? But this is the first week he's been in the office full time in 2023. So he's been off for like 10 weeks. He's been pond hopping from country to country. Every time I speak to him, he's in a different place. So I've managed to get him on. It's the person I've been most excited about getting on, like, since I very first started this. Um, let's think about some of the stuff he's done. So he's worked on, he's actually worked on, on ad accounts, accounts with over 10 million ad spend. So people who know me will probably guess who that is already. He's generated over 45 million in revenue for his clients. He's helped over 10,000 businesses get lead sales and clients to grow their businesses. And he's got a VIP group that has gone from strength to strength in the last seven, eight months that's just gone skyrocketed um where some of his clients are getting 10x results so the 10x in the size of their companies in three months and um, i'll probably get him to talk a little bit about his vip and stuff like that later on when i first met him we um we met on we, we, we had a we had a conversation first of all i used one of his tools um i had an ad account obviously because he's an ad man i had an ad account going uh, spending about three grand a month and within 24 hours of doing kind of what he'd show me in videos i've not even met him properly yet it had cut it in half, so I was like, shit, I need to speak to this guy. Um, we spoke a few times. We hit it off. That was three, four years ago now. And I don't think, it's like a love affair. I don't think there's been a week we haven't spoke. There's definitely not been a full week we haven't spoke <laughs> in over three years. The first year we started working together, uh, just doing little sideline jobs and sideline projects. We did over 600,000 US dollars, okay? So this guy really knows what he's doing. Um, everything I've ever done with him has turned to gold. And I'm proud to call him one of my best friends. Um, David Kasser, tell us who you are, my friend. Cool. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be on. <laughs> you know, I know you did ask me to jump on this when you started the, started the show, um, but I guess I was just out and about traveling. Dubai, Portugal, Slovakia, Australia. wherever you was. Yeah, yeah Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've been all over the world this year. Yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. So let's 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 before we start jumping into the juicy bits and the things you're doing now and what's making you all your money and all the things that you're doing now. Let's before we do that, let's take us all the way back and just give us your backstory. Who you are, where you started out, how you got into this crazy world of doing what it is we do to make a living, which is yeah. so much better than what everyone else does. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Okay. So, um, how far back do you want me to go? So, so basically, oh, I, yeah. geez, I, I just remember being in this dead end call center job, and I was just doing shift work, and I was just getting sick and tired of it. And I stumbled across um, a few things on the internet, like most people do when they're trying to, you know, do a side gig or make some money online. And uh, I came across a few people that were into SEO. So I actually started out into as an SEO and I started ranking websites in the mortgage space and I started generating leads for mortgage brokers in Australia. And basically I was, I was generating over a hundred mortgage leads every single day via SEO. And after after some you know after a few months i was making lots of money and uh working with lots of local mortgage brokers and i think the first two months the mortgage broker had signed over 22 million dollars in in lee in um loans and and that just got me super excited and i was making so much money for my employer as a call center operator i just woke up one morning and thought you know what i'm just going to do this SEO thing full time. And I, I just got sick and tired of the rat race. You know, I'd catch the train every morning and every night sitting in there like squashed like sardines, smelling everyone's body odor. It was just absolutely <laughs> terrible. I got sick of it and it was really depressing. And I know a lot of people can, can relate to that um, doing a nine to five or, or shift work. So I took the plunge and I started working with more and more mortgage brokers, um, just ranking my own sites and selling these leads and doing percentage deals with these mortgage brokers in Australia. 
uh, until, you know, these, these SEO updates started happening, you know, whatever animal update you want to call it, you know, hummingbird, panda, whatever. Uh, and my entire business was gone overnight and I wasn't as persistent as other SEO gurus out there. Uh, I did try again and then it, I just, I just felt like the rug kept on getting pulled from underneath me every time I tried to rank it. So I, I dabbled in a little bit of AdSense. And for those of you that don't know what AdSense is, um, you set up a few blogs, you put some Google ads on it. And when people click on it, you get 50 cents or, you know, a dollar. And that was doing really well. At, at one stage, it was doing like $30,000 a month. Uh, and guess what happened? Google did another update and I got slapped. I got the good old Google slap. And And, and at that point, I thought, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be another way for me to be in more control, more control of, you know, the traffic and not having my business completely gone overnight. And I was, yeah, so that's that's really where I started to get passionate about paid advertising. Uh, and I completely forgot about SEO. And I know a lot of people doing very well with SEO um, that stuck to it and found the ways to make it work. Um, but I pivoted and I went straight into paid ads uh, and I just loved paid ads because it just gave me that instant gratification. You know, I could run some ads uh, and, and obviously I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I, uh, I lost, you know, tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, and uh, but I eventually figured out a way to make it work. Uh, and I'm actually using the exact same strategy that I've been that I started with many many years ago. So no matter what changes with Google, no matter what happens, I'm still using the same strategy, and it's still working uh, time and time again. So I lived in Australia. I then moved to Europe um, in my 20s, and I lived in Malta for a year. I actually took a year off in Malta because I had a little GoDaddy business that was doing really really well. And uh, and then I just went to London, just traveled around, met with family. And that's when I decided, you know what, I want to take this business to another level. And I got m more involved with PPC and I started running uh, my own agency, helping local businesses around the world. So that's like so a really short version. <laughs> that's kind of your life story in, 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 in seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, some of the things you said then, I mean, I remember one of my first slaps, I lost 19 websites overnight. They just literally, they didn't just derank them. They took them down completely. Yeah. And it was like, oh, shit. So so I, I always say like uh, entrepreneurs are like the sadists of the business world, right? And and, and, and SEOs are like this. Is, is it a sadist where you, is it one of the people who like to hurt themselves? <laughs> uh, and, and SEOs are like the sadists of the, um, of the internet, like of online marketing. And then the the comparison is is between SEO and um and and paid ads is you always look at it like okay so so SEO is the nice girl that you have to date and you have to treat nice and you have to you know you have to take out and you have to spend a bit of time on whereas <laughs> you know where it's going don't you PPC is more like a hooker <laughs> it's just it's throw your cash at it bam you get exactly what you want and, and you never see it again. <laughs> So <laughs> gotta love your examples. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how I look at them. Now you mentioned your GoDaddy business, and I noticed you grinned a little bit when you talked about your GoDaddy business. And I think we have mentioned this in the past sometime, but I kind of forget. So tell us a little bit more about what, what's a GoDaddy business. Yeah. So basically, I uh, I was a reseller of GoDaddy, and uh, I at the time I was teaching parents, you know, how to how to help their kids generate their own pocket money so they wouldn't have to ask mom and dad for it. Uh, and on all the thank you pages and email follow-ups, uh, the first step was for them to set up a, a hosting account and a domain name for their children. So uh, obviously you can't go into a contract with a minor, so the parents had to do everything for them. Uh, long story short, uh, I became one of the top three GoDaddy affiliates in the world. Uh, and oh, at the time I was living in Slovakia and I received this phone call from GoDaddy and they're like, Hey, is this David Casa? We we'd love to invite you to Arizona, all expenses paid trip. Uh, at first I thought this has got to be a joke, you know? <laughs> so 
and they said, okay, so give us your details. We're going to book your flights. We're going to book your accommodation. And um, a couple of weeks later, I, I was in Arizona. And uh, they were treating a lot of their top affiliates. And before you knew it, you know, I'm sat there in a, in a boardroom with a lot of these GoDaddy execs. And they just really wanted to find out how the hell are you doing this? You, you, you're, just, you're, you're basically charging um, six to ten times more than we are, and you've got zero refunds, and we want to know what's going on. <laughs> so that's really what they did. So they wined and dined me, and they took me out like they did with the other top affiliates in the world. And, uh, yeah, I managed to do that within 12 months. So that was like a little side hobby business that I had. It wasn't even the core business model. It was just something that kind of, it was just like a byproduct of you know, adding value and uh, delivering a really cool product. Come on, then. Tell us yeah. how did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> you can't go that far. <laughs> and then not. Yeah, so, so basically um, I just made sure that uh, the very first thing that the client had to do or the parent at the, in this stage was, you know, buy hosting and, by um, a domain name for your child. And after a few months, uh, it caught on really well. And a lot of parents were actually writing in to support, pretending to be children because they wanted to make an extra $500 or $1,000 a month um, with the programs that I was teaching. So they actually wrote in and I was like, hang on, these aren't, these aren't the kids that we're you know, talking to. But the parents were always like contacting me um, you know, to help them with, you know, the training and so on. And, and that's really how it ex exploded. And, uh, and after a while, I just lost interest in that business and I moved on to other things, you know? So I was more interested in running an agency and I wanted to, you know, start working on some really, really big ad accounts and that's where it led to. So so were these make people actually making a grand a month? Just, just yeah. So there were there were some there was like uh, some parents were writing in and they were saying, well, their twelve year old son has a skateboarding blog and he put some AdSense up and he was making two hundred fifty dollars a month. Uh, and then there was uh, some girls that were interested in like ballet and they had their own ballet blog that they made with their parents and uh, the parents would obviously have to sign up for everything and collect the money and then redistribute the the pocket money to their children, all of that stuff. Um, but these these children were essentially just creating a blog about stuff they're passionate about and putting some ads on it, and then they'd get like fifty hundred or two hundred fifty dollars a month from that. So you was using the affiliate strategy of giving a bonus, and the bonus was yeah. your training, and your training took them step by step through the process, yeah. which meant that exactly. without that training, it's like I've bought a domain, I've bought a host. What the fuck do I do? Yeah, and you thought, okay, do 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 make the perfect offer. Um, which, which you obviously you'd not learned to do that before then you just kind of knew that, okay, this is missing. So yeah. I'm going to stick it all together and make, so obviously you've done loads and loads of crazy stuff with ads. Um, and I've spoke to you about some of it in the past, but give us, give us some examples of businesses you've built. I know there's businesses you've given away, uh, because <laughs> you got bored of them. But what, what I'm saying is give us examples of some of the businesses or some of the things you've sold via ads and some of the things that have been profitable, some of the things that have maybe been a bit like, okay, you think it'd work, but it actually didn't. Yeah. 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 It, it's funny like that because, uh, you just, sometimes you just never know what's going to make you a lot of money. And sometimes it can be something as strange as a bandana, a multifunctional bandana that you sell on an e com site. And then all of a sudden it's made quarter of a million in, in sales. And you're like, holy crap, that just started off as a, as a joke or a hobby. Uh, and then it just went off to, to make quite a lot of money. So my, my girlfriend approached me at the time and she was like, I wouldn't mind making, you know, building my own business. And I was like, well, what are you passionate about? And she said, well, I love to design stuff. I love Photoshop and I love designing stuff. And I said, well, why don't you just design your own product? And, uh, you know, after some conversations, we landed on creating this uh, bandana. It was a multifunctional bandana. Those ones you wear around your neck, you put it as a headscarf. And there's like six or seven ways you can use it. I didn't know too much about the product. I just knew how to sell it. Uh, on with via ads and so she she designed these uh, bandanas and uh, I helped her sell it uh, via Google ads and we were acquiring customers for nine cents we were paying one cent clicks 
And for every sale that we made via Google ads on, on some of the brand campaigns we set up, it, so it was costing us nine cents to acquire a customer. So that was one little e-com business that I helped my girlfriend set up. And we spent quite a lot of time on that initially. Um, but then it was just running really, really smoothly. Um, I've had and other businesses. Did, that did, sorry? That one did quarter of a million, that? In the first year, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it that's, just started off, okay. okay, as a hobby business. Like, okay, maybe it'll make a grand a month or something like that. Uh, and it was actually in a non-English speaking market. So we'd have to translate everything. And uh, so that was interesting. Um, I've owned a data feed business before. Uh, and basically what, because I started out uh, when I was younger, when I was like 16 years old, I was really passionate about computers and technology. And I started selling computers. I didn't mention this in my previous backstory. This is going back, back when I was like 16 years old. So I started um, going to these computer swap meets every single Saturday and Sunday. And my mum and dad would take me and I'd buy some parts and uh, I'd sell them to my friends at school because, you know, I knew I would basically buy parts from different wholesalers, get the best price. And I would sell it to my friends at school and build their computers. Um, long story short, not only my friends at school became clients, but the school became a client because they didn't know how I was getting all these computers so cheap. And But as I was running this little <laughs> computer business, I, I realized, you know what, this is really frustrating. You know, I've got to go to this supplier to buy a stick of RAM, I've got to go to this supplier to buy a CD-ROM or this supplier for a hard drive. And the prices were literally changing every single day, sometimes by the hour. And that was frustrating because I would sometimes I would sell a part at a loss because I didn't know. So I thought, okay, th this is can't be just me having this problem. Chances are there are many other computer retailers around the country that are having this problem. And so I, I thought, okay, well, let's build this little data feed business where it would pull in all the data from all the suppliers into one instant PC shop. And uh what that would do is it would allow the computer retailers to just add their percentage profit margin and every single six hours or 12 hours, or 24 hours, it would run this um, this software and it will update their prices with their profit margin so they wouldn't sell their products at a loss. Uh, so I was one of the first companies to do that in Australia and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I had a, lot, a bit of trouble selling that software because I didn't know a lot about ads at, at that time because I was still into SEO. And I remember feeling completely down and out and I went to the bar and I'm having a beer and, and I was talking to this guy next to me and it turns out he happened to own uh, one of the major computer franchises in the country. And I told him about this software that I built and I've only got like 20 customers on it. And he's like, holy crap, I could give this to all of my franchisees around the country. So it had cost, I believe, a little over 100000 to build this thing. And we made that back in a week from this partnership from a guy that I'd met at a bar that happened to own. It was just like super weird and super lucky. Um, and so that was another business that I'd owned. That, you were 16 uh, when you started that? Well, I was 16 when I got passionate about computers and technology and my mom and dad would take me to computer swap meets. Uh, so I didn't have the normal teenage years the most teenagers had they were out you know house parties and you know or studying or having fun or whatever uh, I actually was I had computer parts all over my room just imagine your your high, you know a teenager's bedroom I was literally yeah. stepping over computer parts because I had to build these computers um, so I would receive money on a Thursday I would give it to my mum before I went to school on a Friday she'd go to the bank she'd deposit the money uh, Friday night, I'd pay the suppliers. Saturday morning, dad would drive me to the computer swap meets. I'd pick up all the goods. And Saturday night, we were building computers. And uh, and then I'd go, you know, build computers all weekend and go back to school on a Monday. Uh, and that was my childhood. In fact, I ended up um, like dropping out of, not dropping out, but I failed high school. I didn't even, you know, I don't even have a, a high school certificate or a university degree or anything like that because. When I was 16, 17, going through, you know, year 11 and trying to get through year 12, I was running a business. So, you know, I was trying to help mom and dad with the bills and 
Uh, and that, that was pretty much my teenage years. So you, you're, you're, uh, uh, do you know what, right? Every, nearly every single successful entrepreneur seems to be a dropout. We, yeah. <laughs> like they all seem to drop out. It's like, you know what? This is boring as shit. Just sat in the classroom with a guy stood in front of a board or a woman talking shit for hours, boring you to death and making you fall asleep. And it's like, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> let's go make, and do you know what? M most entrepreneurs like what, in, in the younger years, I know, I know by the time I got into my teenage years, I, I was doing sometimes two to 300 quid a day. Um, and, and, and it was doing crazy shit. I mean, we'd go to like car boot sales. I don't know if you, what that is, but it's like going, getting, um, buying secondhand stuff. And mm -hmm. then you, you, back then you didn't have the internet. So we'd phone, we'd go to the, um, we'd go to the, the papers and read through the papers and find the, um, the, the like little ads that they had in there for these antique dealers. So what we do is we go looking for antiques and then we bring them back to our house and we'd, we'd clean them all up, try not to damage them and things. And then we'd phone around different antique dealers and get them to come to the house and have a look at them. They turn up and you're like, Oh, you're a kid. <laughs> and it's like yeah how are you gonna give me for this and and we used to make like we'd make some real big money on these things because wow. there, there was tons and then we got into all sorts of, but but that's kind of a similar like you would use you was a lot more technical than i was but it's kind of the same you, it's it's mad in it yeah. because I, every time i meet somebody who's got a degree and who's gone through school and he's gone through all the education and everything else they're normally working 10 12 hour days and they're making shit money <laughs> And they yeah. fucking ate it, and it's like, whoa! So obviously, after after your your, your digital uh, your digital business, mm -hmm. um, so obviously you've done that late, later on in the years. What what other ads type of businesses have you had? What, 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 have you got any weird ones that you've done, or any that you've thought wouldn't work that have actually absolutely killed it, and then you've um weird ones, <laughs> yeah, man, weird um, ones. I I remember doing the thingy one with you. Um. The card blockers, that was cool. Oh, yeah. My, my, so. <laughs> my, in fact, I've actually like four times when you send me some more your card blockers and my missus keeps mithering me because, you know, the little the little cardboard wallet yeah, she did? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I started she, she just, I started that business um, probably about six months before COVID hit. And yep. I was, you know, I wanted a physical product uh, that, you know, I, we could sell like crazy during the Christmas periods and like all the you know, like holiday seasons. And so we came out with this product to block um, the RFID blockers. So people can't steal your credit card details and it protects your identity, uh, that sort of thing. Because there's, you know, there's these really weird uh, people that go around supermarkets, scanning people's pockets and walking out with a, a bunch of information. And I thought, oh, God, this, this has got to be stopped somehow. So I saw some RFID blockers and I tested them and I started selling these things. Unfortunately, when COVID hit, everybody was standing two meters away from each other and uh, everyone was stuck at home. Oh, so <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I've actually still got... Um, more than 10,000 units sat in a warehouse in Slovakia that I haven't sold yet. Um, so, yeah, I've had a few businesses that have done really well, but then there's weird businesses like this that I, I knew still has legs, um, but uh, I just never I just never continued with it because, you know, obviously, well, my software business started to take off. Uh, so I completely forgot about the RFID business. But when we did start selling it, uh, it was selling – really really well uh and then COVID hit and then everything changed even uh even our fa all our facebook accounts got blocked even the multifunctional bandana business facebook account got blocked because they thought we were trying to um take advantage of the pandemic even though we were selling the product three years prior before to the pandemic they thought we were trying to you know in, when there was a mask shortage and all the ads had people, you know, like skiers and snowboarders covering their face with our multifunctional bandanas um, that, you know, so all those businesses just came to a grinding halt. And uh, I started to work on, you know, the software business and training business. And that's kind of what you're doing right now, isn't it? The software and the training. Yeah, we're up yeah. to that bit, yeah. Bef before we jump onto that, and I am interested in getting onto that, right? But but before we get onto that, you, obviously you've done some real big numbers in ads, um, not just for yourself, but for clients. What's the most profitable industry you've worked in on ads? So for me personally, the most profitable mm. industry 
would be like the the white collar industry industry mortgage brokers, insurance mm-hmm. agents. Uh, you know, whenever I would send them a quote or give them a proposal, uh, I was always able to land those clients with high ticket setup fees and monthly recurrings. Uh, I really like working with law firms as well. Uh, just as long as their phone is ringing and leads are coming in, then you know they're not going to bother you too much. But for me, because I started out with helping mortgage brokers, I've always had the confidence to help people in the finance industry. Uh, I remember, okay. I remember this one guy came to me and he said, "Dave, I'm spending thirty grand a month, and I'm making thirty grand a month. I'm breaking even, and if this keeps on going, I'm going to be." out of business very, very soon. So in a single afternoon, uh, I went over his ads and I helped him out, you know, helped him restructure everything the right way. And within a week, he had more than doubled his business. So uh, he's, then he was on track to, you know, to make 60 grand a month for from a 30 grand spent. Um, so, you know, I really enjoy helping people in you know, the finance industry, insurance industry, and I've got loads and loads of you know, success stories like that. Another one then, what, what was your, what's your biggest failure? We've all had them. What was your biggest failure where you threw something massive into it and, 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 and we lost and you lost, should I say? <laughs> okay. what, 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 think back to that you've had one that's been like, ah, oh, fuck, I wish I'd never done that. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, the card blockers <laughs> for one. Because <laughs> cause, uh, I'd, I'd spent so much money on, on importing all the stock from China and, um, you know, getting the designers, getting paying professional voiceovers in other languages to do the sales videos. And, and I was like putting so much energy and I was super excited about it. And then when the crisis hit, I was like, man, boy, I wish I'd never done that. I just wasted like six months <laughs> of my life. So that's, that's definitely one of them. Um, yeah, there's, there's been a lot of little failures along the way. Um, you know, just trying to, you know, do like social media type posting businesses that didn't work. And I would try and uh, make money with that. Uh, I wouldn't say like, there's been some really, really huge, huge, like failures where I'd lost like everything because of a business. Uh, I guess there was one where I was exporting uh, ex-government, ex-lease computers to call centers in another country, uh, and that didn't work out. The guys never paid their bills, and that put me out of business. Um, <laughs> so that was one. Uh, I have, you know, I have lost everything many times over, at least three times in my life uh, through personal crisis or business crisis. Um, but, and that, and that's been, it was tough at the time, but I'm really glad that I, I kind of went through all those trials and tribulations, um, because it's really helped me, you know, push forward and not give up because now knowing what I know, I guess we could lose everything today and be back up and running in business in no time, um, because of those experiences that we went through. Yeah, that, that's that's something I I strongly believe in. Right, the people. Right, this is this is something I try and push and, and let people know is 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 the, is the knowledge and the process. Yeah, the useless about the implementation and what will happen is if you, if you figure out how to do something and you figure out the process and you just keep implementing over and over and over and over again, you'll be successful forever. But what happens is people get like bored of the business model or, or the or, or shit gets in the way, life gets in the way, yeah. and you stop implementing. You make millions and you're thinking, eh, we're rich forever, and then you stop implementing and all of a sudden you lose it again. But the great thing is because you've learned to do it once, you can do it again. I know for a fact if I lost it, if someone came now and took absolutely everything out of here um, and, 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 and all my money out the bank and all my investments and all the other things that I've got going on, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd do 10 grand in 30 days. A yeah, piece well, of piss. It wouldn't we've, be we've, difficult. Had, we've had this conversation in the past and Mike said, uh, you know, the first thing I'd do is I'd call Dave <laughs> 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 and we'd set yep. something up and we, <laughs> but you're right. You're right. Uh, definitely. Um, 
yeah, it's it's it is learning that knowledge and 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 then and I think the biggest reason for failure is is not implementing. I think a lot of people, most people who want to be entrepreneurs but are not not like you're a natural entrepreneur. The shit you were doing in school, rather than chasing around birds and all that and getting drunk around the back of the thingies and trying to, I don't know, cop a field if they let you or anything <laughs> like that, like most young teenagers do. You're sat at home building computers and 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 um, having fun with, with in a different way. Yeah. Um, but, but I kind of, kind of, that's what, it, it, that's, that's the difference. Whereas, whereas a lot of people who follow the rules and follow the thing are, are probably not made out to be entrepreneurs. And unless they find something they absolutely love implementing, it becomes difficult where it's the game in it. It's, it's in your head, isn't it? That what you want to do, you're like constantly focused on it. Like I can't think about anything else. Um, I, I love it. I, I love it. As you know, I love it. Right. Let's move to now. Cause we've got half an hour in, I try and I try and not keep you for more than an hour. So, so, so. Let's move to now. What, 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 have, we, what have you got going in the, on in the Dave Castle world now? What, yeah. what have we got to look forward to? What are you excited about? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Cool. Tell me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so now um, we're working on, uh, you know, software that helps, you know, local businesses get more leads, sales, and clients. Uh, it's always been, you know, the, the main goal uh, of this software company is really to help uh, either, whether it's a digital agency or a local business, get more leads, get more sales, get more clients. And every single feature that we build into a tool, which is called Agency Apps, uh, it's, it's the sole purpose is really to help that business get more leads, sales and clients. So that's what I'm working on right now, working on a this software. I've also got uh, a group of VIP members uh, that I hang out with every single Friday. Uh, where I help, you know, improve their campaigns, uh, you know, help them scale their campaigns uh, and doing everything live in a group format. That's something I'm, I'm really excited about as well, because uh, just seeing them more than 10x their businesses in 90 days. Uh, and I just love receiving the messages from some of the members. So that's getting me excited. Every time I receive a message from members saying, hey, I just closed another 10K deal or a 5K deal. Uh, I've just 5 x my business in the last 90 days ever since I've been in the group. Those sorts of things get me super excited. It also gives me more ideas on how I can make their lives easier, uh, help them be more productive, help them make more money. Uh, and if we and, and and I will help, I basically try to help them achieve that uh, via software and training. So what's the software doing now then? I mean, is yeah. it still just the, the, the paid ads training or have you got, because I mean, we, we had some, software on last week and um it, they've implemented ai i know my software is implementing ai which will be coming out in two weeks i believe it probably have loads of bugs because you know what developers are like where are you going with yours what's your next steps how, yeah. how does it work so can you demo anything yeah sure I, I can demo some stuff now uh if you like tell us about it first go on what is it what, what, yeah, what, what's, so what's... so basically when i was running my agency many many years ago the the biggest frustration i had was the time that it took to set up a properly structured ad campaign and i tried so many different ways and i read so many different blog posts and articles about the best way to structure your ad campaign uh, uh, until i you know came across a different method uh, and i started to implement it and it literally took me days and days uh, to get a campaign up and running. And I thought, surely there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way where we can automate this very painful and time-consuming process. So um, I spoke to a few web developers and uh, we, we developed a way to to turn a three-day or a five-day task into 60 seconds. Okay, uh, let me stop you. Don't yeah, tell me. Yeah. Want, instead, demo it. Demo it. I love it yeah. when it gets to this point because <laughs> that's that's the thing. That's the key to business in it. Find a problem that takes ages. Make it short. People will pay. Yeah. Boom. Cool. Go on right, then. So, hit me up because I've not seen your stuff for a while now. All right. Cool. Yeah, and we just implemented AI into it. Let me just close. <laughs> oh, and, and it does AI. I mean, your your brand campaigns is is is, is my favourite thing that you do, and we'll chat about that at the end because that when people realize what brand campaigns is so stay till the end of the video guys because the brand campaigns thing is fucking amazing um and if dave doesn't chat about it i'll tell you what it is because it's 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 the cheapest way to market any business anywhere in the world cool. anyway sorry i'll shut up mate you 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 yeah yeah cool cool so i guess uh yeah so this is this is agency apps guys um 
uh, the first thing you've got to do is do some keyword research. So let me just grab some keywords for now. I didn't plan anything, but let's just quickly grab some keywords and then we'll build a search campaign so you can see how it all works. Uh, let me just go to uh, here. Let's just do, let's just think of anything on the fly. Let's do um, dentist Real or okay. any, just pick what, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, I was going to say real estate because I, yeah. I, I, I believe you did something with real estate recently. Yeah, we did. And I can, go into, that. I can go into that a uh, bit later, but yeah. So getting real okay. estate leads for under a dollar, you know, like that was cool. That was actually on Monday. We, I started that on Monday. I'll go into that in a second. Uh, okay. So let's just do, um, uh, okay, so let's just do. Do dental, you, was, you were good with dental. Yeah, it's, it's, well, any, anyone, den, any niche really. Uh, dentist near me, we could do that. Mm -hmm. uh, or we could do any other niche or we could do real estate. Anyway, let's just go with that. <laughs> so many ideas in my head to run with. Okay, so dentist oh, so near the me. keyword research is now built in. Yeah, so keyword research is built in, uh, and you can you can also filter these, which I highly recommend. It's really important to get high buyer intent keyword research. So if you're a dentist client or you're a dentist and you don't do any emergencies, emergency type dental work, then you just make sure you exclude you know the word emergency, uh, and then just apply those filters. So I'm just going to grab these keywords. Let's assume that we got the right keywords. I'm just going to download these uh, and the next thing you want to do is build your search campaign. So let me just quickly go ahead and create that now on the fly. I didn't know we were going to do this, but let's just do it anyway. Um, uh, B2C designs. Let me just grab one of the dentist pages that I have. This one. Yeah, this one's converting pretty well. So let's grab this. Okay. So let's um, put the landing page in here. Uh, that's where you put the, the URL where the traffic you want the traffic to go to. I'm just going to create a name for this. Dentist USA. Now you can obviously, you, you know, if it's Los Angeles or wherever the dentist is located, just add your location. I usually leave these settings as is. So I'll just quickly go through this process. Uh, then all I do is I will grab these keywords and I'm just going to copy and paste so let's just paste these in there so next you want to add any negative keywords and these are really keyword like emergency was one of them you know if they don't do any emergency or if they don't do you know free so free yeah free or affordable Get rid of the free people on free and national affordable and like you know, i've got a yeah. you know, sorry affordable free um emergency okay so We've got the keywords in, we've got our negative keywords in. I'm going to leave it on as phrase and exact match and click continue. I'm going to add a bid. Okay. Now, as you guys probably saw before with the keyword research, they were like $20 a click, right? But when you structure these campaigns properly, you don't have to pay that much per click to get impressions and clicks and, and leads from Google. So I, I usually like to start, um, you know, Sometimes, in some cases, 90% lower than what they're mentioning, just to see if there is, you know, any impressions and clicks that come from. So I always start low and slow before I like to scale. So let's just give it a bit of, say, two dollars. It is dental, you know, dental businesses are pretty competitive, but I'll just start this at two dollars, say five dollars a day. You don't really need a big budget for testing in most cases uh, if you've got the patience. So. This is the part where most people are like struggling with, right? So yep. now we just need to create the advert and usually we'd have to write all the ads ourselves. So all I do here is I'll type in AI suggestions and I'll type in dentist. Yeah, oh, this is where I always give in. Yeah. B2C as well. You've got B2B and B2B. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. Okay. And it should come up with some suggestions. Find a dentist near you, local dental care services, find a dentist nearby. These all look pretty good, actually. Descriptions, find a dentist near you, search our database now. Yep, that could be good as well. Uh, and you could you also use this as inspiration. These are just suggestions. You could jump in and tweak it. So I'm going to click save and bang. All the ads are written, uh, all ready no. to go. I can go back in here and I can you know add some call to actions if I want to. <laughs> Um, you know, 
contact us today. So once you've done that and you're happy with all the headlines and the descriptions, then you'll want to tick this box. And what this does is it's called dynamic keyword insertion. So imagine for a minute you're on Google and you type in dentist in San Antonio or dentist in Los Angeles or wherever, wherever you're looking for, and you happen to be targeting that keyword, it will actually dynamically add it will create a new variation, ad variation for you automatically and to make your ads more uh, relevant to their user search. So if somebody types in dentist in Los Angeles, they're going to see an ad that says dentist in LA on the, on the actual advert. And what that does is it, it, it increases your click-through rate. And that's all part of Google giving you a high quality score. So when people... Uh, type in the search term, and then they see an ad that has the exact same search term, they're more likely to click on those ads. And when Google see that you're giving users exactly what they search for, then guess what's going to happen? Google's going to reward you um, with a better, a lower cost per click, which gives you a better return on your ad spend. And they do that with a, giving you a high quality score. So this is really important. Um, and we and I'll, and I'll explain brand campaigns later because, but because that works differently with this. But let's go ahead and continue. So let's click continue and let's click export. Now, before I was telling you guys, um, you know, this process usually takes, you know, a couple of days to get right. So uh, I use a tool called the Google Ads Editor. It's a, it's a free tool um, made by Google that works on PC and Mac. And, and this is actually what I... Um, what I use to, to import these campaigns, and it's really, really easy to do. So let me just show you. So once you've created the actual, um, once you've created the actual uh, campaign in agency apps, you just come here, you go import from file, uh, and then you just grab the, the file. And as you can see here, it's created 2,760 ads. So imagine for a second, you have to create all of these ads uh, manually, yeah? So where is it? Well, if, you had, if, if they took you 10 minutes an ad, that would take you 27,000 minutes. So there's all the ads. They're all ready to go. That I didn't re even write. The AI wrote it for me. Uh, and <laughs> it, it's ready to drive traffic to a landing page just like this. So... And it's targeting all of these keywords that we did. We used agency apps to do the keyword research as well. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's, it's as simple as that, right? That's, so what would normally take you days to do uh, now can be done in just a few clicks using agency apps. Yeah, when I, whenever I do ad campaigns, I, I hate it because the problem you've got is you go into, it, you go into Google Ads, you, you put in an ad campaign, you need to do a, the individual keywords based so that you can add and remove groups and make everything, obviously you make it dynamic. That yeah. there, you've just literally, so you've done 2,700 different ad groups. Like, so what, what would you do next? Would you run them and then wait to see which ones make all the money and then delete the rest? Yeah, so basically during that discovery process, usually the first month is all about like discovering what works and what doesn't, which is why I always start with a lower budget, yeah? And then the second month is all about, okay, let's fine tune this. Let's figure out which, you know, which search terms led to a conversion. In fact, I'll show you now. Um, this was, I was going to save this for later, but this is a campaign uh, uh, that was generating real estate leads. And as you can see here, uh, the average cost per lead is $8.76. Now I started this campaign on Monday and as you can see, some of these leads are coming in at 79 cents. These are real estate leads, name, emails, Shit. or phone numbers. They're waiting for, you know, rent to own home consultants to call them back immediately, right? So during this discovery process, what we're doing now is we're like, oh, okay, let's, let's find the search terms that have a really low cost per conversion, obviously the ones that have enough data. And then we put them into its own campaign. So let me show you how I build winning campaigns. So I always start out with a discovery campaign. One, one set before you leave that page. I, yeah. So you see where it says conversions at the top? Mm -hmm. yep. Does that mean you generated 134 leads? Yeah, so it was 134 leads in the first... Since uh, Monday. Well, 
I actually I actually paused and, and reduced the budget. I only ran it for like two days. Uh, I think the first day it was well over a hundred because I wanted to. I always scale it back because I, I know I don't want to waste money. I want to figure out where are these where are the winning search terms. Um, and I actually I actually was promoting a lead magnet that I created with the agency app software. So I did everything inside the agency app software um, to promote a lead magnet. And we got over a hundred leads in the first twenty-four hours uh, in the real estate niche. And, and what will you do with this campaign now once you've run it? Because I'm assuming you're not trying to f- service these leads yourself. No. So basically, uh, like I said before, I've got a, a VIP group, right? So every single month, I spend my own money, so my VIP members don't have to. Yeah. So they will basically wait for me to to create a winning campaign and then I literally just hand it to them on a silver platter. I'm like, all right, cool. I've spent <laughs> a few grand on this campaign. Uh, here it's generating leads. These are the, these are the search terms that are the absolute winners. And it's great. Like I said before, you got the first month, which is discovering what works, what doesn't. Second month is all about fine tuning. And the third month is all about scaling, right? And usually when you, when you reach the scaling part, that's where you can, you know, set up a campaign before you go to sleep at night, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, you can you can have a good sleep, not having to worry about whether you're going to lose money or not. These are your winning keywords, they're your winning campaigns. So by the time you wake up the next morning, you've got leads that are ready to go. So $8.76 average lead, you've spent probably about a grand looking at that. So you just do that, find the winning campaign and then give it away. Yeah, I do. <laughs> every month yeah yeah that's sometimes, awesome. sometimes twice a month <laughs> but what are your guys are tripling the, and 10x in the size of the businesses they yeah. just wait so you're just handing it them and saying go <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this is <laughs> upload yeah. this and and, yeah. and, put and, to, and, and turn your budget on and they get to vote on which niche as well so you know a, a vip m- member might say i i just got a new client he's a rent to own you know cons- consultant and he want to help people get rent to own get into a rent-to-own property. Uh, so then I will say, okay, cool. Let me help you out with that. Uh, everybody will vote on it saying, yep, I love the real estate niche. Let's do this. Uh, and then I will start spending my own money. And then they'll see me go through this discovery process. So I literally purchased this domain name, this one that you see here on Monday. Purchased it on Monday. And uh, I set everything up within you know half an hour, uh, landing page and everything, which is all done. And I give my VIP members the the landing page as well. So on Friday, uh, I'll show them how to create the winning campaign. I'll give them the landing page. I'll give them the lead magnet. I'll give them everything, the email follow-ups. Uh, yeah, so I create everything from scratch and I give it to them every uh, every single month. Isn't it, isn't it crazy how them shit-looking landing pages convert so well? And yet, if you use the if you use a big fancy flash landing page, it's got more than one thing to do on it. They, they're terrible, but they convert like. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's mental. That I could never understand why, if we made a page look like that, like like I, obviously it doesn't look terrible, but it it doesn't look flashy. It doesn't. Look, they convert like crazy, which is yeah. I don't get it. Do you get it? Do you know why yeah. it is? Or yeah, it's you know it's it's less distractions and it only gives the user one thing to do, right? So you know I'm sure everybody's seen those websites with those flashy gallery slider images, you know, links to their YouTube channel and everything, all up top. Uh, as you can see here, none of this is clickable. There's only one thing to do. Even if you click on this button, it just takes you straight to the top of the page <laughs> to fill in the form. Um, just as long as they're compliant with Google, like having you know the privacy policy and a way for users to contact you and you're following all the rules and you're not promoting anything dodgy, of course, uh, then your ads are going to be approved and you're going to get results. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love using these ugly templates because they only give the user one thing to do and it's it's it re- literally holds them by the hand. It guides them onto the next step. Okay. You look at this page for one second and you know exactly what to do. Yeah. I mean, there's even a big yellow arrow pointing down yeah. saying, <laughs> go here. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, so yeah. So you go through these discovery process and that's how you, you really pull out. Okay. The, the search terms that are, you know, real at a good cost per conversion, you know, imagine selling a real estate lead, um, I know, I know real estate leads, qualified ones can go for more than $50 each. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. imagine spending 84 cents on a real estate lead and, and even just selling it for $10. That's, that's a huge markup. Um, but obviously you'd sell it for a lot more than that. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so go on. I'll let you show me what you're going to show me next. I won't ask. I'll just. I'll just oh, I won't go through it like the entire process like I did before, but just to show you how brand this, camp. Did you want to go brand this, campaigns now or brand campaigns is my favorite thing in the world. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Um, I can explain brand campaigns in under two minutes to anyone in the world, and they'll fall in love with the idea. It's I love it that much. It's like. It, it's what it does is, is genius. Uh, I'll go on and let you yeah, go like through the and explain best, The best example, um, you know, that I love giving people is, you know, you, you can do any niche, restaurants, plumbers, electricians, and so on, yeah? So tell me, um, give me give me any town in, like, that you know really well, Mike, in, in the UK. Manchester. Manchester. Okay, cool. So I'll just type in restaurant, restaurant in Manchester United kingdom okay i'll click generate so with search campaigns you're doing keyword research and you're adding all the keywords in with brand campaigns uh our tool will actually go out there and find um you know restaurants in manchester for you to basically hijack their brand traffic so imagine you're a restaurant or your client owns a restaurant and he wants to get more people at his restaurant instead of the restaurant next door. Uh, he would run this brand campaign. So when people are looking for uh, Browns Manchester, or, um, do any of these look familiar to you? Do you know any of these? Vapiano Ma Manchester. There's lots of there's TGI, TGI Friday. Fridays. Obviously, I've been there. I've been there with yeah. the current um, yeah. Lana, my missus. I, I love um, I love showing this the restaurant example because a lot of people straight away go oh my god yeah I was I was having dinner there the other night and it really you know <laughs> really you know resonates with them so you could do I, like, I'm, a, I'm a McDonald's guy <laughs> <laughs> you could do no <laughs> plumber in London and you could generate all of these search terms yeah uh, and it's completely above board it's not illegal to bid on a competitor's brand the only time it goes against Google's terms of service is when you put the brand in your actual advertisement. Okay. Um, and that's the, that's like the really, really important part. Like if I was to do, if I was just to open up Google now, right. I got to Google for my, for my users, for my users, this is super important. So once you've gone through this little bit, I'll explain to my guys how we're using this it's particular. This is my favorite marketing strategy in the whole world. Bar SEO, but SEO takes six months. Um, it's, yeah, so. it's, it's so profitable. So if I type in Aweber, everybody knows Aweber. If you don't, it's an order email marketing company. Guess who's hijacking their brand? Send in blue is hijacking their brand. So the first business you see here is one of their top competitors. Yeah, they're still here and they might be number one in the SEO results. Uh, but this is, you know, send in blue, another company. Uh, so let's do, I don't know, let's do GoDaddy. They, GoDaddy's number one, but look, number two, domain.com, taking their spot. Um, any other brands you can think of, you'll see that. Try to lead simplify, see if it comes up yeah. in. Where are you at the minute? You're in Portugal, Portugal at the minute, are you? Yeah. Lead simplify. No, nobody's running ads in Portugal. No. Um, but any big, I, any, any I'm big not, brand, I said any big brand, <laughs> any big oh, brand. Thank will, you, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> joke, that was a joke. <laughs> So um, basically, all these big guys are onto something, yeah? Um, and, you know, if you're not tapping into your competitors' traffic that are in the same business as you or your clients, uh, then you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Remember I told you before I was getting, I was acquiring customers for nine cents? This is exactly yeah. how I was doing it because a lot of these brands don't have a lot of competition. Uh you know, when we're, let's just go back here. We've got all these plumbers in London, right? London Plumbing Pros. There's a lot of these brand names. Not a lot of people are, are, comp uh, are bidding on. So you can do you get want me to tell you? Do you want me to t tell you why this is so profitable and it works? Because what we do, yeah, what you're on about right now, yeah. So, for example, let's say 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 you did this for Plumber Manchester, right? Mm -hmm. Plumber Manchester might be getting 3,000 searches every single month. So that's 3,000 people typing in Plumber Manchester every single month. Right, and this is I'm, I'm talking to the, the people watching now. But uh, so, so Plumber Manchester could be getting three thousand searches every single month, and then every single plumber in Manchester, in the whole of Greater Manchester, is targeting Plumber Manchester on their organic search and on their um, and on their SEO. 
uh, sorry, and on their ads, yeah, Plumber Manchester. So there's, let's say there's 200 plumbers in Manchester, all targeting 3,000 keyword searches. So they're paying five, 10, 15, $20 a click, yeah, or pounds a click because it's in the UK, right? So what you do is you use this, you go in and you type in Plumber Manchester. This will pull in every single plumber in Manchester, right? Out of all of those plumbers in Manchester, probably only about 5% of them will have a ad campaign for their own business name. So what happens is, right, you put up an ad campaign that targets their business name, but you don't put their business name in your ad and you get cl- you get um, all of their direct search. So 200 businesses getting an average of, say, 50. Uh, that, in fact, the stats are, the stats are, I was reading them today, uh, local businesses get something like uh, 46% of their um, their search via, via, via organic local search and 37% on average, okay, it's different for different industries, but it's, on average, it's 37% of search for local businesses comes from direct search. So if you imagine, all right, every single business is getting 37%. So so, so let's say that business is getting, I don't know, 100 clicks organically, then they'll be getting um, an additional 37 searches every single month for uh, their direct brand. And nobody's targeting it except you. So you get these for like five cents each or five pence each. And so what you and then as soon as they pick it up, it's like, is this such and such? Yeah, of course it is. How can I help you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bam, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's cover the business. <laughs> and the cool thing about this is you don't just have to settle with this first list, right? You can you could just go dig deep, go you know, plumber in Mayfair, London, and all the other areas, and you could just just sit here all day just stacking up this list. Uh, one thing to remember though is to put your own business name in here. Make sure you're bidding on your own name, even though and I know a lot of SEOs say, you know, I'm already ranked on the front page. Why do I need to do it? Um, could could you paste in? See at the top where you just said Plumber London, and then you said Plumber Mayfair, mm-hmm. right? Is it possible to do what you did before and actually paste in a comma separated list of? So you, you let's say you got all fifty locations you wanted to rank for. You put yep. the word Plumber in front of them all and did a comma separated list and paste them in. Would it would it then just search them all? No, no. But you can if you have them, you could put them. Yep in here in the business name section. Uh, I am speaking to my developers about that. It's an idea that that we've had to put this on steroids where you could actually do a radius. So uh, plumber oh, wow. in London with a radius of 100 kilometers. Uh, and then Fucking every single, hell. so that, that'll be like for the VIP members only, but that is something we have spoken about and put in, in the roadmap. It's really cool. Fuck me. That is super powerful. Because yeah. then, so then, I can, do, I can just go into Manchester and do, let's say, say the electrician stuff. We do a lot of stuff in electricians business. I can just type electricians, Manchester, 100 mile radius. That'll get me most of the area that I want to cover and that'll pull in every single electrician. Mm. Yeah. 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 Well, Holy I'll, shit balls. I'll speak to my developers to bring that back up on the, uh, on the <laughs> road. We'll map. take the booking fee. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll answer. We'll take a booking fee and then we'll give the job to the actual company they're looking for. <laughs> so the right van pulls up. <laughs> Yeah. One thing to remember to do, right, is to add your own, you know, my biz, LTD, always add your own in here and then just simply go through the continue the process just like we did before. But let's just go in here and let's just do plumber near me and let's bring up some ads. As you can see on, on this page, like remember we had that tick box before, it's no longer here. It's no longer uh, appearing here because we don't want to dynamically insert your competitors' brands because this is what gets you in trouble. This is where it goes against Google's terms of service. So that's why we don't have the dynamic keyword insertion tick box here. Uh, And that's pretty much it. You go through, you click export, and you've got a brand campaign that's hijacking all of your competitors' traffic. Um, So does, does everything in your ads platform now use AI? Uh, yeah, so all the all the ad campaign creators, search campaigns, brand campaigns, call campaigns, if you want to drive phone calls, call brand campaigns if you want to hijack your competitors' phone calls. That's the cool one. I've got a <sighs> VIP client that has a – Call uh, brand campaign. He, he has a porta potty client that does that sends out porta potties, portable toilets to, you know, wherever for whatever conferences or events or parties. And he's hijacking all the porta potty – brands and every time they call him they're like oh yeah we need we, is this so and so company he's like no no but we do porta potties as well when where do you want us to you know deliver that to and he's just hijacking all of his competitors um brand name brand phone calls 
Uh, but you've got to. So they're literally they ring you know, up. I mean, that's kind of what we do with the thing. But we send them to a page, so they click it and they think. So with that, it's literally call only ads in it. Yeah, yeah. So it's call only yeah, ads. We've not used that yet. No. Yeah, call only ads. Um, and uh, basically you're targeting all the brands. And then call only campaigns. It's just like search campaigns, but you're driving phone calls instead of clicks to your websites. And then we've got our suite of AI tools, and we're adding a few more as well. Is is it true that the the is it still true that the when 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 you do the call only ads, there's a lot less spam because people can't click it and click off. If they click it, they have to ring you. Um, well, the thing is, when they click on a call only ad, it opens the app, the phone app on your phone, right? And then they choose to to ring you or not. Um, that's that's basically how it works. I would not use a call brand campaign for some niche markets. I wouldn't use it for a medical anything like doctor yeah. related. You know, if somebody's already, you know, seeing the dentist and they've got like five visits, you know, the receptionist is just going to say, that's not Dr. So-and-so, you've got to speak to another doctor. So I don't use it for medical or doctor. Uh, attorneys, I just, I know a lot of people uh, aren't afraid to do it, but attorneys is something I stay away from with brand campaigns because they just love to sue everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, perfect uh, for home services though, isn't it? Yeah, it is perfect for home services. Definitely. What, what, what just one last thing then. I know, yeah, I know sure. I promised I would only keep you on an hour, which I, I make that promise oh, to wow. everybody with, I've already had you on an hour, but That's right. there's, there's, you've got your lead magnets there. Cause I know lead magnets can, uh, are brilliant. What, what, how does that work? Is that, is that, can you demo yeah. that or? Yeah, I can. Uh, I can, I can demo all these at three if you want. Um, but yeah, we can go straight into that, but basically AI oh, go ad, on then, do the yeah. ad mock-up. Yeah, go ad on. Ad mock-ups, yeah. I didn't so, even see that. Yeah. So AI ad mock-ups is really cool. So just imagine you've got a, um, a Sparky electrician business. You put your domain name in here. Uh, you type in electrician. Electrician, yep. Uh, and then you just type an image description. So electrician fixing uh, wall socket. Let's just do that. Okay, so the cool thing about this AI ad mockup generator, it, it allows you to um, generate ads for all your social media ads, right? And it, and it follows all the rules with character limits and things like that. Uh, and I had one of my VIP members actually do this, start creating these um, AI ad mockups and giving them away for free to his existing clients saying, hey, as a goodwill gesture, I wanted to do this for you. And then they're like, oh, hang on. We can pay you to do this as well. And uh, he ended up making thousands oh, and thousands of dollars that week by simply, you know, creating these AI uh, ad mockups. So we are using chat. Um, we are using an AI provider for this. Um, and sometimes it gets takes a little while to, to create. Um, but let's just wait for that to do its thing. And we've also got uh, AI social posts. So we'll do all your social posts and... Uh, so, so how does social post work? You just but what I, I'll, I know. Let the, the, this one, let this one finish. Let it do what it's doing. Cause yeah. So let me just uh, let me just grab this. Maybe just let that do its thing. So social AI social posts. Uh, let's just go through here. I'll just show you some of the AI ad mockups while the other one is loading. Right. So you got the Sparky one here. <laughs> and it'll oh. it'll bring up the need a plumber Gentle look no floor. further our it makes the picture yeah 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 it's whatever the description you put into in it will create the picture uh, it'll do your instagram your linkedin your quit your twitter and it'll basically generate the uh the ad for you and then you can you can export this as a pdf and give it to your client as a goodwill gesture uh, and also if you've got any clients that you're trying to get over the line like they haven't quite hired you yet um, doing something simple like this and saying, hey, you know, I've written these ads for you as well. Um, whether you decide to hire me or not, you know, you can go away and use these. Uh, so you and, could just give these to somebody for free and say, look, I want to work for you. Here's, here's the type of stuff I do. Why don't you test them? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So social posts works exactly the same way. Uh, you just fill in the form and it'll generate. Uh, this is for personal trainer. You're looking to lose weight, build muscle and get fit. Uh, the AI literally writes this ad for you. And not only that, it will add like all the hashtags, hashtag fitness girls, hashtag weight loss journey. Um, and it'll even add, create another variation with some emojis for Instagram, uh, hashtag healthy habits and so on. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn and Twitter as well. 
Uh, so that's AI social posts. So you don't have to waste time, you know, writing all the ads and coming up with the mock-ups. The AI will actually generate it all for you. So you just put in th- three things, your website, a keyword, and an image description. Yeah, exactly. You just go in here and put your website, <laughs> the phrase, like, I want to hire a plumber or buy my book about building rabbit cages or whatever it is. And it will literally generate the social post for you. Uh, then we have AI lead magnets. Okay. Um, so, you know, locksmith lead magnet. Yeah. Tell me that one. Yeah. So basically you just fill it in and it'll create a headline. Keep your home secure with this comprehensive locksmith security checklist. Uh, ensure you're protected against unwanted intruders. So it's, I haven't written anything. All I did was um, so select the actual lead magnet let's, idea. Let's have a scan down it. Dead bolts including doors. Let me just wait there. Oh, that's right. Them. You're the locksmith pro, aren't you? Yes, man. Keyless entry systems, keyless window. Holy fucking shit. And you've not written none of this? No. The AI basically writes that and it adds your, your link at the bottom. Uh, this is actually what we did to generate all those real estate leads, right? We, we give them a free checklist, they opt in for the checklist, uh, and then they can download the lead magnet that we created using the AI lead magnet. So when you go to create a lead magnet, so let's just do, okay, I don't know, let's pick, let's let's try and do one now. Give me a, a niche, anything really. It, you could do- well, Okay, uh, uh, lead magnet, do, do, we're, we're doing a lot in electricians at the minute, so you could okay. do- Oh, you've just done electrician. Yeah. Let's not do that. Let's do dog walkers. <laughs> yeah, okay. Dog, <laughs> Some of the dog walkers walker. is massive industry, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of less mobile people that are like struggle to get about. And 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 they've got dogs and they love them like family members. They pay people to walk them. Yeah, let's just do that. So you get get lead if- mag- magnet ideas because a lot of people might be. Oops, I, I left a space in here. Let me just fix that. Could you could you have put like man walking a red dog and and just see what it does? No, don't mess it up because I want it to look good for the people <sighs> watching. <can> try, yeah. <laughs> it's just me. Sure. Like, yeah. No, okay. I'm thinking people notice things that catch their eyes, so it'd be yeah. like, fuck me, yeah. he's, he's he's walking a red dog. <laughs> <laughs> Free guide to choosing the right dog walker. Okay. Free dog walking safety checklist. Okay. Um, let's just do free guide to choosing the right dog walker. Okay. So basically, you go through this and you click uh, get lead magnet. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's how we did it, right? And like you guys so, saw, we were able to generate these leads uh, in the real estate niche uh, just by giving away these lead magnets, whether it was a checklist or anything or a free guide, anything like that. So in in that in that thing here, all you all all I'd probably put at the bottom is um, with this checklist, you've also been given a like a tw- a twenty minute business strategy call for free that would normally cost you five hundred dollars, yeah. uh, but you need to quote this code and put a code next to it when they think you think it, and give them a number to ring or give them a form to fill in yeah, off yeah, the yeah. thing, and you get people contacting you then, won't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Holy so get shit, the most out of your dog. dog walker with this free guide, everything you need to know about choosing the right dog walker. Uh, now you can jump in here. We've we've got a few new updates coming up where you can actually swap the image with your own image and, and so on. Uh, but you can click in here and very soon you'll be able to really format this. Uh, so if you wanted it to, to change it around. So let's have a quick look what it's written. Uh, experience is one thing. The most important factor when hiring a dog walker is their level of experience. We've got qualifications, reliability, fees. So it's written, you know, the basics of this, um, you know, this dog walking lead magnet. Then you just go click save. It's called this dog walker and click save. Uh, and then you, it will generate the, the PDF, right? And, you, there and can you edit that inside of there as well? Uh, once it's already created, no, but, uh, when you're going through the process, so yeah. when you're creating, after it's created, you can edit it yeah. before, just as long as you edit it before saving it, uh, then you can do that, yeah? Uh, so this is the AI lead magnet generator. We actually, I actually showed it to a few people and um, before I launched it, and they said, holy crap, I just spent a whole week building a lead magnet. Mate, and now I can just do. generate these out, yeah? 
Yeah, I mean that that's why why that's why the first thing I asked you, even, even over the AI ad mock-ups, mm-hmm. I wanted to look at the lead magnet when I seen it because I was being selfish and thinking to myself, holy fucking shit, anybody knows in business your email list makes you the most money out of everything else, and lead magnets are the best thing to fill your email list up. Um yeah. and if you can get something like that that just builds them for you. Um <laughs> Okay. Let's just do that in the thing. I'm just so the other cool thing about this is we've been testing it with other languages because recently um, you know, I've had a lot of requests for you know Spanish and German. Uh, all you have to do is simply select the lead magnet idea, so free workout plan or um, you know free fitness assessment and goal setting session. Do that workout plan because I'm sure that's what Alex and Mosey was talking about. He did something in the in the, in the thingy next dinner. Okay. He and did that gym launch. Yeah, we can do that. And then you just write, you know, write the text in Spanish. And it should. No, you, no, you can't. Sorry, I've got this European keyboard that's frustrating me. Let's just see what happens there. <laughs> so I've had some requests for, you know, writing these in other languages. Uh, and we've been fine tuning it a bit and trying to get the AI to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, and yeah, now, now I've got a group of Spanish VIP members as well, and they're using the tools to, you know, get more leads, sales and clients. So let's let that do its thing. Um, you know, sometimes the provider takes a while to do it, but it's still quicker than, yeah, a while, maybe a minute or so but it's still quicker than doing it manually for sure. Well, d- doing it, creating the lead magnet manually. Yeah. You can, you can, you can actually put somebody on it and it will take two days of them coming back. Is this right? Does this need changing? Is this right? Go and do the research, come back again. You have to make sure it's valuable. That's the big issue is, is it valuable? And, and if it's not, then it's a waste of time doing it because as soon as you speak to him, it's like you, you got my email address and now you send him emails and you sent me that piece yeah. of shit lead magnet or that piece of shit PDF that didn't help at all. They just think you're an idiot. So it, it's very important to get a lead magnet right. So being able to do it like this is is fucking genius. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then so you've got a landing page builder there by the look of that. Is that a landing page builder or dynamic pages? What's that? Yeah. So dynamic pages is really, really cool because uh, remember when we were building the the campaign. Uh, before and we yeah. tick that box where it dynamically adds the keyword onto the advert. Um, so ah. when people go to Google, right, and they type in, you know, plumber in London, and then they see an advertisement that says plumber in London. Yeah. Yeah. So plumber in London, there's one right there. Uh, whenever they see. So if the- I was putting plumber for leaky bath pipe, in London, if that was my keyword, yeah, your well, page would specifically say "plumber for a leaky bath pipe in London." Exactly, but uh, obviously Genius. there's a there's a character limit. Um, so whenever the user types in a keyword and they see it in the headline, these are the these are the titles that usually get you know the highest click through rate. And then when they click on that ad and they land on a page that says "plumber plumbers in London." Uh, it'll yeah. dynamically not only add it to the ad copy, but it will add it to the landing pages dynamically. And what that does is it makes people feel like they're in the right place at the right time. And that's what increases conversions. When Google sees that you're giving the users exactly what they searched for, then they will reward you with high quality scores, lower CPCs, so you get a better return on your ad spend. So because you're doing it dynamically, this can work across like hundreds and hundreds of different um, ads all with one page, can't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can actually add more. You can do multiple sections of the website to change dynamically, not just one headline. So, wow. Yeah. So it's, yeah. ah, yeah. This is, yeah. Do, you know, do you know what? I think you pay an absolute, I mean, charge of fortune for this. It's unbounce. They do yeah. something like that, but it costs a, an arm and a leg and... It yeah. doesn't work very well. So, so when somebody types in rent to own a home, they'll see it in the ad, they'll see it on the landing page, and it'll change dynamically. Love it. Absolutely love it, mate. That is awesome. Dave, I've kept you on an hour and 15 minutes. I promise you I'd only keep you on for an hour. Um, the only thing left for me to ask you, mate, is if people do want to contact you, um, where do they go? How do they contact you? Can they get in touch with you? Um, yeah. Sure. 
when uh, you're- best thing to do um, is you can go to agencyapps.com. Um, you can see, you can just go to agencyapps.com. Dot com if you if you'd like to um, you know read more about um, you know the new AI features you can just click here from agencyapps.com and you can see uh, some of the success stories uh, and you know give the tool a try for yourself and start using it for your business. Oh, I started talking then, but I'd muted my microphone. Yeah, absolutely love it, right, mate? I'm going to say thank you very very much for coming on this week. I know it took me nearly a quarter of a year to get you on because somebody who has 10 week holidays that's just crazy but obviously you've been doing loads because i've not seen you proper um but this is this is like completely revolutionary the only thing i've ever really used this year your brand campaigns and i absolutely love that because there's no other way i can ever find unless you're doing uh, seo there's no other way of getting 10 15 cent clicks that convert into clients it's like in the locksmith industry that i'm in um or was in um, that would basically, you're looking at 10 to 15 pounds a click sometimes and it's absolutely ridiculous. And then you brought brand campaigns out and it was like, holy fuck, <laughs> we can target everyone else's businesses in like in five minutes. And it just, it, it blew it open. And then now we, our ad campaigns that we're doing for local businesses is all based around your bank, brand campaign strategy, uh, using that tool because it's, it's just brilliant. Awesome. Um, and, Thank and. You. We set them up and you just leave them alone. They just tend to keep running um, yeah. and making money and you can just scale and just keep. And the way we do the spreading like a wave of our websites, as soon as we get into a local area, I mean, that's the thing is, is you can answer calls um, and for, for a business, we take a booking fee, say full address, postcode, credit or debit card, security appointment, take the booking fee, and then we can give the job to the business they wanted in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, we just exactly. getting 50 quid for doing it it's, it's genius absolutely love it uh thank you very very much for coming on mate really do appreciate you coming on guys um agencyapps.com is it yep yep um and obviously you can see what dave's doing um brilliant mate thanks very much for coming cheers. on it's been awesome thanks man and i'll see you guys next week awesome cheers